Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to look at two particular types of logarithms, common logarithms and natural logarithms. Now, what's special about these is simply that they have specific bases and they are bases that have a lot of practical application and sometimes and usually we actually use a sort of unexpected notation. So let's start first of all with common logarithms. Sometimes you will see a logarithm written with apparently no base on it. Notice the base seems to be missing. That's called a common logarithm. And when the base is missing, it's understood to be 10. So anytime you see a logarithm or a log without a base, it's understood to be 10. And you find many, many applications for those, which you'll see in some videos coming up. Um, another type of logarithm that is very, very important is called a natural logarithm. These are written like this. Instead of L-O-G at all, you have L-N, uh, logarithme naturel, uh, pardon my horrible French, uh, but that is French for natural logarithm, so L-N, uh, they have the adjective following the noun. Um, and if you see LN, that's always understood to be logarithm base E, that peculiar number E that we've talked about before that has, again, a lot of surprising applications, even though it's strange. Now, these, both of these types of logarithms are so important that most calculators can directly calculate either a common logarithm or a natural logarithm. And we'll see how that happens in some upcoming videos, exactly how you do that on a TI-83 or 84 calculator. Most other bases of logarithms calculators cannot do. So if, if you think about uh, the TI-83, 84 series particularly, uh, some of the newer editions of TI-84s can, for example, find logarithm base two or logarithm base seven. But the older versions cannot, and many just basic calculators cannot either. It can only do common logarithms and natural logarithms. That may seem like a really huge drawback, because what if you have a base 2 logarithm or something? We're going to see, again, in a future video, there's something called the change of base formula, which allows us to take other logarithms with other bases and write them in terms of either common logarithms or natural logarithms, and that's going to give us the ability to then use our calculators. So I want to do a few logarithms that can be done simply by hand because of what we know about what the logarithm means and some properties that we already know. So for example, we are going to be able to by hand calculate the logarithm of 10. Notice I didn't say any base. If I don't say a base, it's understood to be 10. I might say common logarithm of 10. But when I see this, I want to think of it as log base 10 of 100. And there's a couple ways you could look at this. One way would be if you go to the basic definition of logarithmic notation, when you have something written in the form y equal log base a of x, that means in exponential form that x is equal to a to the y. And basically that says you take this base raised to this exponent to get this number. So this, the a raised to the y gives you x. So you can think of this much the same way by saying, okay, 10 raised to what exponent would give me 100. What exponent do I need to raise 10 to to get 100? That is really the essence of using this basic definition. And if you think about it that way, you can see that it's 2. Again, 10 raised to what exponent would give me 100? The answer is 2. If that doesn't quite work for you, there's another way you could look at this. In a previous section, we also found out that there's another property of logarithms that says that if you have a logarithm base a of a to the x, because those are inverse functions, you'll just get x. So some students find the following approach 
to be a little bit better. You tell me. Um, what you do is you go ahead and you start with the uh, log base 10 of 100. And then you think about, can 100 be written as a power of that base? And you begin to realize, yeah, it can. The 100 is 10 squared. And then applying this theorem... What happens if you is if your base is a and then you take that base of that same base to a power, you just get the power. So the log base 10 of 10 squared because of the inverse relation would again just be 2. Now I think you can see that those two approaches are really equivalent. So you can either take the first approach, which involves thinking about what is the missing exponent, what, what exponent do you put on the base to get the number... Uh, inside the logarithm, or you can apply this definition or this theorem instead. Let's look at another one just to see how that might work. If you remember um, writing things in scientific notation, you might realize that this is this point zero 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 one is ten to the minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So you might just notice, hey, this is the logarithm of 10 to the minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you say, oh, but a common logarithm is a base 10 logarithm. And so applying once again this inverse relation that we had before, the logarithm base 10 of 10 to the negative 4 must be negative 4. So I can do that one by hand. Again, think about which one of those approaches makes the most sense to you and run with that. Let's do some natural logarithms. Uh, actually, very much the same idea. When you see the natural logarithm, remember that that means log base e of e to the 7, and you see that same inverse relationship immediately showing up. Just the fact that the base is this peculiar number e doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the logarithm base e of e to the 7, and by the inverse relation, that's just going to be 7. And there you go. This next one looks hard, but if you remember that radicals can be written as fraction exponents, you can rewrite this as the natural log of e to the 4 thirds power. The 4 represents the exponent, and the 3 represents the root. And then you can again realize, oh, but natural logarithm is logarithm base e. So logarithm base e of e to the 4 thirds. And by the same inverse relationship, that would be 4 thirds. One more example, and this is a trick question. So before you look at this very much at all, what you want to do is remember that the domain of any logarithmic function, no matter what the base is, whatever it may be, just use A for any base, is always just zero to infinity. What that means, negative 10 is not part of the domain. So if it's not part of the domain, then the logarithm is going to be undefined. because the negative 10 is not in the domain. An easy way to remember that, that just makes it sound casual and easy to keep track of, that will become actually very, very important in an upcoming uh, set of topics. And that is simply that you can only take logarithms of positive numbers. Hang on to that. It's a more casual way to say that the domain is zero to infinity uh, with the open parentheses on the zero. You can only take logarithms of positive numbers. Hang on to that. That way it'll be very useful to you. In future videos, we're going to see that you can do all these calculations on your calculator as well. Uh, we'll see what some applications are and we'll explore that change of base theorem to enable us to handle other bases of logarithms too.